I think I really know why a lot of students struggle when it comes to the OSI model. They think of it as something that's not real. You know, they think of it as like some ethereal thing out there that doesn't make any sense. It's all theory. And one of the things you can do with the OSI model is you can really bring it to life utilizing a simple tool. It's a free tool called Wireshark. In Wireshark, you can see the various layers of the OSI model and what's going on inside of them. Let's do that together in this nugget. You know what I am when it comes to Wireshark? I'm one of those guys that knows just enough to be dangerous. And by the way, Wireshark is dangerous. It can sniff packets off the wire, potentially getting like clear text passwords and stuff. So it may be in violation of your corporate policy for you to use it. Please watch out for that. Before you were to stick this in your company and start using it, make sure it's permitted. Here I am on my home network and my wife and daughter said, yep, it's okay for you to use it. So I just checked that out with them. And... If you want to know even more about Wireshark, check out the CBT Nuggets course on Wireshark. You're going to love it. It's going to really make you a Wireshark expert. But like I said, I know enough to be dangerous. I'm going to go up here to the Go menu. Ah, uh, no, let's try the Capture menu. Yeah, that's the one. I'm going to say Capture Interfaces, and it's going to bring up the interfaces that are on my system. And right now, you can tell just from the packets that are coming in and out that I'm using this Wi-Fi connection. Look at that. So I'll say, all right, let's start capturing packets on that Wi-Fi connection. Look at how much communication that my system is doing. In fact, what I'll do is just stop it right there. The stop button right here will stop that capture. We've obviously already gotten enough information to take a look at things. So here I've scrolled up to the top of these captured packets and look at this. Here is an ARP frame. Wow. So we can open this up. We double click it and it comes up here in its own window and we can see that if we expand the frame information, it gives us some various facts about this frame. And look at this, the Ethernet 2 information is what we're really interested in because here we can see that this was a broadcast destination. So think about what a switch would do with this. It would take in this ARP and because the destination is a broadcast, it's going to send it out all of the ports in that VLAN. Look at this source MAC address and we can see that the type of frame was an ARP frame. If we look in the address resolution protocol request portion, we can literally see that it was looking for the target IP address 192.168.1.179 and it's looking for the MAC address that coordinates with that target IP address. So you can bring the OSI model to life, can't you? We can dive into one of these transmission control protocol packets and we can go in, once again, expanding this frame information. We can come down here. We can see the layer two stuff. We can see the network layer stuff, the IP version four stuff like the source IP address and the destination IP address. We can go into the transmission control protocol information and we can see the source port and the destination port and look at all these things that make transmission control protocol reliable like sequence numbers and acknowledgement numbers. So, oh, look, there's the window size. So you can really bring the information that you learn about the OSI model to life with a tool like Wireshark and I really encourage you to do that once again in an approved network. Something else that you're going to be using the OSI model for, as I alluded to in my exam cram text for the ICND-1 exam, you're really going to be using it from a troubleshooting perspective. Whenever I begin troubleshooting a problem, I decide, all right, am I going to start at the bottom of the OSI model and work my way up? Or am I going to start at the top and work my way down? Or am I going to use that divide and conquer approach? By the way, when I'm at a happy hour in town at the local pub, I always use a bottom-up approach. So please, don't be afraid. Try and breathe some life into that boring old OSI model. It will really, really do you some good as a network engineer. And keep in mind, it's probably going to be a lot easier to learn stuff, to have a little fun along the way in that journey. I hope this nugget was informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.